Welcome to another edition of Community Tapestry. I'm Napoleon Bell, and I'm the Executive Director with the City of Columbus Community Relations Commission. We'd like to welcome you to the program, and always, we'd like to welcome the co-host to the program, Ms. Tony Teague. Thank you. It's good to be back. All right. As always, and you know, it's, it's even better to be back, you know, this week, and I, we've got so, great weather. It is. 80 degrees or You know some? what they say about March, though? They say it comes in like a lion goes out like a lamb, or it comes in like a lamb goes out like a lion. So since we're having this lambish weather, yeah. uh, we're having this really good <laughs> lambish weather. I'm really, I'm waiting for I the know. other shoe to drop. Right, yeah. I, I, and it'll probably snow at the end of March. And, and <laughs> we'll a, have snow really in July. That'll really upset me, and I'm sure all of our viewers will be totally upset because I am ready to get out on the water. Oh, I'm ready you know. to plant a garden. Right, right. right. Well, so you plant the garden, I'm not planting the water, I, Yeah. No doubt, but since we're having such great weather, you know, there's a lot of springtime events coming up, a lot of mm -hmm. summer events that everybody's getting, getting in the motion of yeah. doing, and that's, and that's the, the topic of our program tonight. I know, all the fun around Central Ohio. E exactly, so we're really looking forward to that and looking forward to our two guests, and mm -hmm. we'll just go ahead and, and introduce our two guests, our first guest, uh, no stranger to, to television right. and being out there and being out in the community is uh, our own uh, Director McKnight. He's the Director of the Recreation and Parks Department. I'd like to welcome you to the program. Thanks for having this us. This is the first time we've had you on here. The first time I've been on your show, yeah. All right, well, we're going to have to make sure you get on more we, we often. We will, we That's will. That's right. We've got a lot to talk he's about. He's our hidden superstar. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And another superstar next to him of the King Arts Complex, we have... Javon Collins, who's a program director over there at the King Arts Complex, yes. to welcome you to the program. Thank you, thank you. A lot of things going on over there, and a lot of things that we have to look forward to in, uh, this summer coming up. So I tell you what, since we since we're talking to you, Javon, and got to ask you, you know, there's so many different things coming up, you know, at the King Arts mm -hmm. Complex, and, and I understand, you know, a big thing is your anniversary. Yes. How, how many years is it? It's 25 years that we're celebrating here in the community. So 25 we're, years. Yes, we're very excited about that. Yes. Uh, we'll have an open house on Tuesday, March 27th from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. So it's a free community event, and we encourage everyone to attend. Okay, now that's, uh, what's the date on Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday, March 27th, okay. 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. So, so anybody can come by? Yes, we'll have birthday cake and punch. It's going to be a great celebration. So we want, we want a few thousand people or more. To, to fill the house. Yes, yes, similar to our MLK open house that we have every year for Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. So it'll be a full, you know, array of performances and events for families to uh, participate in. Great. Now, well, wh what else is, I mean, you've got, you've got that big event coming up to really kick off, is, I, I guess you say, kick off the year with, mm -hmm. with your celebrating the 25 years. Mm -hmm. What special things can people look forward to mm -hmm. um, here in the near future? Well, in the near future, we always have our summer academy and also our spring academy for children. So they're still doing registrations for that for the kids to be at the King Arts Complex, learn some things about art and the culture of Mount Vernon Avenue. Uh, also, we have a great dance performance, Baker and Tarpaga, that will take place in um, April 13th through the 15th. And we'll have our Mind, Body, and Soul event, in which is in collaboration with the Ward Family YMCA on Woodland Avenue. So that's a health event for the whole community. There will be health screening and uh, lessons about eating right and things of that nature. Uh, we want to definitely battle childhood obesity. So we have uh, some people coming in to talk to kids about making the right selections with their food. That's great. So your spring, your spring program is actually in conjunction or it coordinates with um, the uh, City of Columbus schools, mm -hmm. Columbus City Schools, yes. their spring break. Mm -hmm. So do you have, is it full already or pe can people still register? I think registrations are still available. So okay. uh, definitely contact the King Arts Complex, go to our website or give us a call and we'll definitely have more information for you. And what's your number? 645-KING. Uh, now, i got to ask you one more question, uh -huh. though, of, of, of timing, because there's also the big gala. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. That goes on. And, I mean, this, it's this, always, is, this has got to be known yeah. not only citywide, but I think statewide because yeah. of such yeah. the great things that are going on. And I know with celebrating, you know, 200, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in addition to the 25 years that, that yes. you guys have been around, that I'm sure there's some mm -hmm. great things mm -hmm. planned for that. Oh, yeah. I mean, we have a, a huge artist that has Ohio roots. Uh, we're definitely going to make that announcement here very soon. Okay, okay. you but can't I, tell us now. Uh, you don't want to make the right big now. reveal right <laughs> now. <laughs> not right now. Not right now. But, um, you know, it, it's going to be great. I think everyone's going to be pleased, and everyone who's kind of got an idea of who it'll be, they're mm -hmm. very excited. 
So it's on Saturday, May 19th from mm -hmm. 8 p.m. to 1 a.m.? Yes. Um, or mm -hmm. party until you can't party anymore. Right. <laughs> and at 7 p.m., we'll have a VIP reception, and we're honoring the Honorable Mayor Michael B. Coleman. Oh, great. So oh, nice. there's a great. VIP reception. It's, it's going to be wonderful. Wow. See, that's, that, that is a not-miss event. You, yeah. you, yes. You got, and and I've, I've went to a couple of them, and I tell you what, they, they are incredible events, and you have a great time. Mm -hmm. see a lot of great people, mm -hmm. you know, and people you haven't seen. Yeah, yeah. In a it's long it's time, almost like it's, a family community reunion mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. everybody just coming back together, and the food is ooh la la. Yeah, we can't wait for this year. And speaking of a community family reunion, we'll have our 14th annual Heritage Concert Series, and that will start July 12th, and that's when everyone goes out to Mimi Moore Park, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a great, great concert out there every Thursday night from 6 to 9 p.m. I hope you'll have some of the same vendors. Oh, uh, yeah. You have a, yeah. a guy that sells ribs out there. Yeah, the rib man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's grown exponentially in my tenure there. So let me ask you again, then, just for our viewing audience, you know, because mm -hmm. you've mentioned a lot of different events. Mm -hmm. um, how can they find out about those events? I know you, you said on the website, mm -hmm. and if you give us that website address, and then also the phone number for, for your mm -hmm. office, maybe yeah. to call. Yeah, it's www.kingartscomplex.org. Okay. And the, uh, the number for everyone to reach us is, uh, of course, 614-645-KING, which is 5464. 5464. Mm -hmm. That's some great stuff coming on. We're going to come back to you in here in just great. a little bit because we want to mm -hmm. find out some more things that are going Wonderful. on and talk about the King Arts Complex and how they've changed over, over, over the years. Um, now, to Director McKnight with Recreation Parks. I know you have one or two things going on there, or a or, or hundred <laughs> right. going on. So let's, let's, yeah, let's talk about some of the things that, that, that are you know, coming up here, here that, that you guys are doing that we're really excited about. Well, first, you know, as, as you've already indicated, we're having great weather right now. So I would encourage people. We've got 235 parks. We've got about 60 miles of trails. We've got the recreation centers. We're just wrapping up our, uh, our winter basketball leagues. Uh, we're getting into our summer soccer or winter spring soccer leagues right now. So those things are going on uh, in the spring season right now. And the, the parks have just been full with this great weather we've been having. And like you, I'm a little worried about that other shoe dropping here, but uh, <laughs> it's been great to have this weather out uh, this time of year. But uh, the exciting thing that uh, we're doing right now, we just opened up uh, this last Saturday registration for our summer camps. And uh, I've got the brochure with me here that uh, uh, we put out. It's uh, available in our recreation centers and other locations oh, okay. around the city. Um, it's also available on our website at www.columbusrecparks.com uh, and you can call our office as well. You can register online, but we've got uh, uh, camps going on for 10 weeks throughout the summer at a whole host of locations and you can be involved in whether it's a, a sports camp that you want to be involved in, if you want an arts camp. Uh, we have general camps that we offer just uh, outdoor having fun. Um, there's something for everybody out there that uh, they can participate in. They're very reasonably priced and we even offer scholarships for those that have uh, uh, the need to uh, have some support to be able to get into the programs. We don't want to turn anybody away. So uh, just the summer is going to be a very busy summer, a lot going on, uh, great programs uh, for everybody. Uh, all ages, so we want you to get out there and enjoy those camps. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a great opportunity, it mm -hmm. sounds like, to get right in right now because mm -hmm. a lot of people wait until the last minute, so sure. this is in, your enrollment period is going on now. It goes on now, and we keep enrollment open until all the camps are full. I will tell you that there are some of the camps, some of the more popular ones, our gymnastics camp, for example, is a real popular one that have already filled up. Okay. So if you are interested in some of the camps, it would be a good idea to get on uh, line, look at the uh, schedule, see what's out there, and pick out some of those camps. So we, we register online, so you can go online from your own home when it's convenient for you to do that. However, if for whatever reason you're not comfortable doing it online, you can go to any one of our 28 recreation centers and we'll, we'll sign you up right there and help you get into the programs. That's amazing. I also heard that there's some collaboration that you do with other entities throughout the city, including maybe one that's right next to it. Sure, Please. sure. We, we, we do a camp in the uh, summer with uh, some of our staff and some of the staff from the King Arts Complex mm -hmm. and uh, kind of a hip hop program, dance program, and they put on a production at the end in the theater uh, at the end of the camp. Uh, very well received. Uh, we've got some great staff. Uh, the King's Complex has some great staff that uh, the kids really have a, a good time doing that kind of program. We also work with some of the other agencies around Metro Parks, some of the joint projects we're doing there uh, with either Three Creeks Park or the Trail Program or the uh, Audubon Center and the, the programs down there. We partner up and, and offer some programs that way. Um, so there's a lot of different folks that we work with uh, to, to make sure that uh, everybody's got an opportunity to get out and enjoy the outdoors. Well, speaking of enjoying the outdoors, you know, my enjoyment 
would be playing golf. <laughs> now, are the are the golf courses open? Are the, are the city golf courses? Our open? courses are open every day of the year except for Christmas and New Year's. So, okay. if the weather's suitable, you can get out and play, Napoleon. Um, so we I are, have no excuse. Then. That, you have no excuse. You know, you need to get out there and practice. Uh, if you want to beat me, you're going to have to get out there and practice. <laughs> he now. didn't say get out there and play. He said get out there and practice. Said that on <laughs> national <laughs> syndicated television. Uh, Napoleon has to give me strokes every time we play together. Um, we have seven courses. Uh, uh, then they range from, uh, we've got a, uh, uh, like Wilson Road, the nine hole course, which is a basically a par three course. It's very popular with beginners. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the seniors like to go out there because it's a very easy course to play. Uh, and then we've got the courses like uh, Mental Memorial and uh, Raymond, which are uh, uh, more challenging 18-hole championship courses. And then we've got the, the courses like Champions Golf Course, which is a very challenging course. Um, so we, we offer a range of golf that's uh, out there that, um, depending on your level of play, we've got a course that can uh, uh, challenge you. Uh, we're very reasonably priced and uh, we're open. We're having some uh, a great spring right now actually. We're, we've had a lot of folks come out again. This weather's really really uh, got the golfers out early this year. Right. Well, and, and, and one thing to let some people know that might not know, but most people know in regards to the airport golf course. Now they're down this year. Yeah, airport golf course is closed this year. We uh, closed it last fall. It will reopen in the spring of 2013 and it's really due to uh, an airport project. They are moving a runway. If you've played that golf course, you know the runway lights run through a portion of the golf course where they're having to move those runway lights, which is requiring the redesign of some of the holes at the same time. So that work is underway, um, and we will be open next spring, uh, ready to go again. It'll have, be, have a little different layout, a little different track than maybe you were used to before, but we're going to make some improvements when we do it, and it'll, I think it'll be a real challenging course and something that people enjoy getting back out to, mm -hmm. to play. Great. There's, there's probably some behind the scenes, and I'm always thinking about, you know, there, when we go to the parks, we see that things are pristine, mm -hmm. there's always mulch and mm -hmm. other things, but what does it really take for you to run um, Columbus uh, Recreation and Parks? Well, it's a big operation. Our, our budget is at about $36 million a year. We've got, uh, as I said, about 235 parks, probably about 7,000 acres of land that we maintain in some level. So we've got all of our maintenance crews that are out mowing the grass, maintaining the playground equipment. We have all of our staff in the recreation centers and the, the staff that run all the camps that we offer. And, and, and when we talk about recreation too, uh, I want to mention a couple of specific programs that we have that maybe some folks aren't aware of, but we've got a real good, uh, real strong outdoor education program that's headquartered out at Indian Village Day Camp uh, near Griggs Reservoir. Uh, outdoor education, natural areas, preserves, they uh, do some interpretive programming, they do fishing programs, boating programs, kayaking, canoeing, those kinds of things. So they get kids out in nature. One of the ones that's a lot of fun, they have one day where the, with the young kids, they take them into the creek and they just get into the mud. And at the end of the day, you look at them and they are just covered head to toe in mud. And they, but they've had a great time. I'm not sure the parents want to put them in the cars, take them home at the end of the day. You but know, the best thing to do with that well, is you take plastic trash bags and you cover your seats. Yeah, well, we hose them down. Before <laughs> we put them in the car so that's a great program. Uh, we also have a therapeutic recreation program that's headquartered out of Franklin Park for uh, participants with disabilities. Uh, and that, that's one of the uh, very rewarding program when you go out and see what's going on there. They do wheelchair, softball, basketball. Uh, we've even had some wheelchair rugby leagues. Wow. Um, uh, so they do a lot of different kinds of activities, and we have a lot of camps there uh, as well during the summer, and those are, again, camps that tend to fill up fairly quickly. There's a lot of demand there for, for that kind of thing. Okay. So, so those are a couple of programs. We also have a, a, a safe boating and a, a boating education program up at O'Shaughnessy Reservoir if you want to learn how to sail. We've got some sailboats up there. You go up and you learn how to sail. Uh, so there's some really unique programs wow. that we offer. there's a lot going on. There's there's I mean, that's, that's like almost like a one-stop shop. Anything right. you need to do sure. outdoors or even indoors, We've got you it. can go to recreation <laughs> parks to do. And we haven't touched on the special events and activities yet either. And, uh, you know, with the opening of the Scioto Mile mm -hmm. last year, we um, have a lot of concerts down at the new Bicentennial Park stage. We've yeah. got the outdoor fountain down there that uh, kids and families Beautiful love to come fountain. down and play yeah. in. Uh, we're going to have some couple of movies again. We're going to have, uh, we'd call it Fantastic Fountain Side on Wednesdays with uh, programming at noon for the kids. And we'll have some folks out there entertaining the kids. Uh, that's going on. Jazz and Rib Fest, I heard you mention earlier you like uh, ribs. Uh, 
Uh, third week of July, third weekend in July, we have the Jazz and Rib Fest, uh, which is an event we produce. Uh, we have some great music, some great jazz, some great uh, uh, entertainment, as well as uh, I think probably 25 or 26 rib burners out there. So if you can't find some ribs right, there's uh, a problem. that, that, <laughs> that you don't like, yeah, there's a problem there. You're yeah. not trying very hard or you're awfully particular. Unless so. you wait yeah. till the last day and you end mm -hmm. up in line and they run out of ribs. Right, then there's a problem. Then there's a problem. <laughs> well, well, let me turn back to, to Javon, though, real quick. Um, um, because, you know, we talked about the great things that are going on in the King Arts Complex, and sometimes we don't get to ask the people that work there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you being the program director, what does, you know, I, and I'm not sure how long you've been there, but what mm -hmm. does the King Arts Complex mean to you? It means a lot to me, to be quite honest. Actually, um, in sixth grade, I got my scholarship to go to the Ohio State University in the King Arts Complex. So it's kind of come full circle for me just to have the opportunity to go to college and you know having my first you know real job at the King Arts Complex so it's truly a blessing to be a part of it but um, it's a true team effort uh, you know as far as with me with programming we have an education director marketing director facilities director and of course our executive director uh, so we're a huge support team because we're all somewhat of a small staff so we rely a lot on our volunteers so everyone kinda pitches in and you know we do what we need to do to make sure it gets done you mentioned volunteers. It, yes. You know, people. There's so many people that believe in the King Arts Complex mm -hmm. and, your, and your mission. How would someone go about volunteering to help with the programming that you're that you're speaking of? Yeah, all the information again is on the website or giving us a call. We have a volunteer coordinator, Cat Jones, who uh, facilitates the whole volunteer program. So there's a lot of opportunities within the volunteer program in which we have volunteers coming in during the day to assist with you know a litany of things we have going on. And uh, of course, for all of our programming, um, like for the show we had last Saturday with Lonnie Liston Smith, a soulful night of keys. Uh, you know, the volunteers are the ticket takers, the ushers. They work the concessions. They're the bartenders. So it's a it's a full full array of uh, opportunities through volunteering. Wow. Now, Javon, your job also, your job as a program director is to make sure that you're up on the latest and greatest and mm -hmm. what's going on in the in the arts world mm -hmm. uh, nationwide. Mm -hmm. What is that like for you? It's, it's exciting to be quite honest. Uh, we're a part of the National Performance Network and I'm actually the vice chair for the Midwest region. So being a part of that I get to have you know our finger or pulse on what's going on nationally. So it's great to implement a lot of the artists that we see when we do a national convening or even to share with, you know, organizations such as Alverno Presents in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to see what they're doing and see how we can get that here in the King Arts, Com I mean, in Columbus for the King Arts Complex. But we also have a great relationship with the Wex Center for the Arts. And that's actually where I, you know, started in the arts when I was an undergraduate at Ohio State. So working at the Wex Center for the Arts kind of led me to going to the King Arts Complex. Yeah, I have to say before no Napoleon goes to his next question that we are really proud of you. You are <laughs> Thank you. you are homegrown. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. a Columbus native and, and you know, here you are and look at the good that you're doing in the community. I appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you. Well one last question then for you well from me, but for mm -hmm. now. <laughs> um, you know, being at the King Arts Complex and, and the programs that you've talked mm -hmm. about and some of the the you know um, the uh, theatrical things that go on there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, you met I'm sure some really influential and yeah. some 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 Hollywood stars. Yeah. Who, who, who stands out, you know, in, in your repertoire of I've, people that you've met? I've met so many people, but one that stands out is uh, Harry Belafonte. Mm -hmm. uh, when we had him for our Legends and Legacy series, you know, I chatted with him, and uh, he was like, "I want to hang out with you." I'm like, "This is Harry Belafonte," you know. So, but uh, meeting my, meeting Maya Angelou was great as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we had Jay-Z, Beyonce, and P. Diddy for uh, something in 2008 involving the election. But uh, in my first day there, actually, uh, Jesse Jackson was there. So um, it was, you know, that was my first day. So you yeah. came right around the time when um, President Barack yes. Obama was running for mm -hmm. election. Okay. Yeah, okay. he didn't announce yet, but, you know, so we got to meet him before, you know, he wow. was. Wow. So Somebody forgot got. to call me on that. I <laughs> what, what happened there? You missed the phone call? <laughs> I, I must not have picked I up that time. You gave him the call. I'm sure you did. Right. And Jesse, my brother, he, you know, <laughs> he was supposed to call me. Something was supposed to happen. Well, Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. Well let, well, let me turn back, you know, because to, to Director McKnight, you know, we hadn't, um, we talked a little bit about the, the, the programs or the events that you have mm -hmm. coming up, but also there's a, a, pro, a program that, that you've started to do um, and putting together that has, has, has gotten a lot of press and, and, mm -hmm. and some, something to deal with direct, directly working with our youth mm -hmm. and the issues that they're dealing with in, in, in the mm -hmm. communities, the APPS program. Right. 
Could you expand on some of that and what's kind of going on? Sure. I think a lot of this comes out of uh, the mayor's, Mayor Coleman's uh, desire to address a lot of the challenges that the young people in this community face and make sure that we're providing positive opportunities uh, for them so that uh, they can make good decisions and take make uh, go in a good direction as opposed to acting out or negative behavior. APPS uh, is Applications for Purpose, Pride, and Success. It's a program that we kicked off last year in 2011 and we're going to grow it in 2012. It's got several components to it, but one of the one of the things we're doing is in uh, four of our centers this summer, and it'll be uh, uh, Barrick, Beatty, Linden, and uh, Barrick, Beatty, Linden, and the fourth one will come to me, Glenwood. I'm <laughs> okay. sorry, Glenwood. Uh, this summer, or this this summer, we'll have some programs that will be later in the evening. Uh, activities in the centers where we'll try to draw uh, 14, 21 year olds into the centers. We're actually going to have uh, what we call some intervention workers too, which will be out in the streets and. Uh, trying to connect with some of the kids that maybe um, aren't getting the direction or potentially at risk and how do we get them into some programs so that they can get the help they need or get some assistance to put them on a the right path and show them what some of the alternatives are, uh, you know, what some of the opportunities might be out there, whether it's uh, job training or help getting jobs or education, those kinds of things. So we're real excited about this program. Um, it's still in its infancy, I think, with us, but it's one that we we'll really, really will be growing over the next several years. Mayor also announced a couple of things at the State of the City address here recently, and it's his Youth First initiative, and it really still ties to his desire to make sure that we're offering quality programs for our young people. One of those is going to be a, uh, a grant program and directed towards uh, youth athletics. You know, let's get kids out, let's get them active. Again, it gives them something to do. It also helps get them healthy. You know, we're dealing with some uh, health, health issues in this community and across the country. So um, part of that will be to uh, provide like a scholarship type program where youth um, and organizations that are providing, whether it's soccer, football programs, baseball programs, or some of the other athletics out there, can have an opportunity to get some funding to help underwrite some of the cost of these programs. If you, I know you've got children and have been involved in sports, uh, especially if you get to the upper level sports, um, some of the travel leagues and so on, it can get quite expensive. So yeah. we want to try to offset some of those costs so we can get more folks, more of those young people, the opportunity to be involved in sports. Yeah, that's huge because when we talk about juvenile diabetes and all the things, oh, the health sure. issues that come along with that, we get them working and running and, yeah. and doing those type of things, but give them the opportunity to be able to do it. Yeah. I think recreation and parks and one of the things, you know, when we think of recreation, we think of, okay, some kids out playing basketball or on the playground or riding their bikes. But when you really start thinking about the long-term benefits of the programs we offer, there really is a health benefit. If you can get kids out active, involved, it increases, improves their health, um, you know, which is a lifelong kind of uh, activity uh, that they can participate in. You know, we also look at the economic benefit of parks. Um, we've got some events and tournaments down in Burliner Park, for example, uh, that have a tremendous spinoff. The, one of the big softball tournaments we did, uh, a girls fast pitch tournament a number of years ago, the Sports Commission, Commission estimated had about a $12 million spinoff in terms of economic benefit to the community. So there's a lot of things that uh, recreation uh, programs, parks, open space bring to a community that aren't maybe as readily seen or understood uh, by folks that are out using the park. So uh, we want to encourage people to participate. Obviously, the recreation is a great thing to get out, just have a good time, enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of benefits to that beyond just uh, the recreation. Yeah, it's always good to be out in green space, mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and when I'm hearing you talking, and actually from both, both perspectives, it's, it's recreation but not only in body but in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's sure. what I'm hearing here. Sure, there's a tremendous mental health benefit, uh, I think, to having open space in parks. And there are studies that have done, been done that show that people who live near parks or get out in parks are healthier, both mentally and physically, the less stress, um, those kinds of things. So, yeah, there is a real positive benefit there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it adds to the quality of life. It, it absolutely does. It's a real quality of life issue for the community. One last thing you, you, you touched on and I, and I, about this softball. Is, is there a big tournament that's planned for... for for this year, um, well, that uh, are the major leaguers were supposed to come in, or, or did, or am yeah, I speaking and, ahead? Of it? You're a little ahead of the okay. curve. <laughs> it hasn't been announced yet, but watch for something that's going to be pretty exciting. It's a one day or a two day event. Okay. Oh wait a minute! Uh, Do we have the both? Of, we have two guests <laughs> on our show that are keeping secrets. <laughs> Javon's not giving us information. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's an opportunity. It was a contest held by. Uh, uh, a national company okay. and a local individual won it, and so there's going to be a game, and there mm. may be some okay. uh, 
some pretty big league players coming right. in to uh, participate in that. Well, That's great. One, you know, don't forget my phone number. That's right. Again. I mean, Javon we, forgot we will my make phone sure. number. We will make sure you know. If it I'm happens, not even let, let me know. <laughs> and then we'll have a follow-up on the show about, <laughs> sure. about, about the event there and the event there. All right. Mm -hmm. This is good. You know, I, I do have another curious question for the both of you. What's been your proudest accomplishment or the thing that's impacted you most with the work that you're doing with uh, recreation and parks and with the King Arts Complex? Yeah, for me, is uh, one of the things that happened recently was that we had our Kwanzaa celebration uh, and bringing it back, you know, to be at the King Arts Complex for the whole week. And uh, there was one lady who was just so, you know, emotional about it. She actually cried. You know, she was just so happy that um, we were working together with the Kwanzaa to make sure there's a full week event, you know, within the city. So it's in the past, it's kind of bounced from, you know, location to location. But to have, you know, a program at the King Arts Complex and, you know, a lot of people were thanking me uh, or thanking the King Arts Complex to making sure that was a part of what we do. Excellent. You know, I think for me and uh, in my evolution, I've been with the department, as you know, for 30 plus years now. And, I've seen a lot uh, develop over the years, but uh, you know it's the impact we have on kids day in and day out. Every day, we make a difference in somebody's life with the programs we operate. So, um, as we go out into the parks, as we go out into the centers, and you see the young people participating, and you know there's some folks probably in this room that are products of recreation and parks that have come up through the programs, and there are a lot of people, some famous, but some just average folks that are doing their job, raising their family, that are products of this department. And to see that day in and day out and the impact we have uh, on an ongoing basis. And I think that's, that's the most rewarding thing that uh, we do and it's what keeps me coming back year after year and, and continuing to work hard to provide those services. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, what, you, what you've touched on, and, and actually I, could probably, I see it in both, is that you know, when, when you come up through recreation parks and then some, you, mm -hmm. you then turn, you, you might be volunteering and or working with recreation sure. parks. Yeah. And the same thing, that's what, what, what you did. Mm -hmm. That's just with, through the King Arts Complex. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you stuck with it and it just is that passion, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I've got to ask, you know, because I know with, with both positions, and this will be the last question because I know we're running out of time, but um, with that passion, I mean, what, you know, the work that both of you do it takes a lot of work. You know, and it's not just work eight to five, but you're, you know, you're doing things in the evening, so are you. I mean, what keeps you going? What keeps you going to do what you do? Well, again, it's that having an impact every day on somebody's life. We were at a program last night. I was standing talking to one of the police officers at their open house. A young man from our Capital Kids, two young men from our Capital Kids program came up, which is an after-school program, walked up to the officer, looked him in the eye, stuck out their hand hi my name is what are you you know I want to talk to you about your profession what can we do to help keep crime off the street these were fourth graders but wow. the, the impact that these that this program has on these kids how polite they are how self-assured they are mm -hmm. uh, I think those are the kinds of things that just keep you you know when you see it, it it makes you want to get out and work harder and come back and do it again exactly right Thanks, Alan. I think it's just uh, the importance of the King Arts Complex what we do in the community uh, that just keeps me going every day. And just the fact of, you know, like my great grandfather helped build Poindexter Village. I'm really mm -hmm. deeply rooted in Columbus. So mm -hmm. I think my efforts will further, you know, what's going on in Columbus and to be a face in the future to keep it going for the King Arts Complex, you know, 25 years and, you know, being a part of the seeds for the next 200 years of Columbus, Ohio. So we'll have you back on the 50th anniversary. Is that's that what right, you're saying? that's right. And he's yeah. a face to remember, so everybody remember him. Right. <laughs> and Javon Collins. Appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. Last question, how to get a hold of you. If I want to go to the King Arts Complex, if I want some more information, yeah. what's the number to call? 614-645-KING. Uh, 645-KING? King. Yep. Columbus Recreation and Park, 645-3319 or www.columbusrecparks.com. All right, Thank all you. right. Well, Thanks for being our this guest. is some great summer stuff to look forward to. And there's even more coming coming up in our next segment when we talk about robotics and robotics in schools. Definitely. So as you know, you know we're we're big on community and we're actually definitely big on our young people. Mm -hmm. You know, because as we say, you know, catching them in the act of That's doing right. something great. Doing something good. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these words. <laughs>